change is tough. Now, we've just been through Thanksgiving and all, we've been splurging and all that wonderful food we ate. And then right after Thanksgiving, it goes right into the Christmas season, all those Christmas dinners and gumbos and Christmas sweets and dinners and all that stuff. And then finally, finally we get to January, you know, and whew, now it's January. I can finally kind of get back into routine, start eating a little more healthy. And then you walk into Rouse's and, and all of a sudden right there to meet you, is a huge stack of king cakes. Come on. And they have a little free sample thing right next to it. Unbelievable. And so the battle of the bulge continues. Guys, it is tough to change. I mean, a medical study a few years ago revealed just how difficult change really is. Roughly 600,000 people have had a heart bypass every year. 600,000 heart bypasses. And these people are told by their doctors that after their bypasses that they have to change their lifestyle. They just got to do it. This heart bypass, you know, it was kind of a temporary fix, but you, you've got to change your diet, say the doctor. You must quit smoking and drinking. You must exercise and reduce stress in your life. In short, the doctors are saying, change or die. And you kind of think that that would get their attention. You think that these heart patients would vote for change. Oh, yeah, if it's, if it's make these changes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to change. But that's not the case. 90% of the heart patients do not change. They just stay exactly the same. Study after study shows that after two years after heart surgery, the patients have not altered their lifestyles, their behavior at all. Instead of making changes, they chose death. Change is that hard. So what's the problem? Well, what's the problem? Why are we, there so many epic failures for us when it comes to making real change in our life? Well, let me answer that question by, by this way. After, after selling his car, which was a green Nissan 240SX, 22-year-old Wesley French decided he wanted his car back. And so Wesley got a couple of his friends and buddies, and they went over and mugged the guy that they'd sold the car to, and, and they beat this poor guy over the head with a two-by-four, and they fled the scene in the green Nissan 240SX. Now, Wesley thought that he had a foolproof, I mean, a brilliant plan to be able to avoid getting caught by the police. So as soon as he, he got, it, got his car back and they'd stolen it from the guy that bought it from him, they went to his garage and shut the door, and he and his friends got some spray paint, some black spray paint, and put it all over the car, you know, and changed it from green to black. And that plan worked for about five hours. Unfortunately, as Wesley and his buddies headed north to Washington State, they had not bothered to change their North Dakota license plates. And the police very easily spotted the stolen getaway car, and Wesley spent the next year in jail. According to one news story, now he might be making license plates. You see, it takes more than just a thin layer of paint to change a car. You might spray it a little bit, but the car is still the same car. But isn't that what we do sometimes? Isn't that kind of the way we try to make changes? You know, we make a few surface changes. You know, we, we just thought, oh, I'm going to diet, so I'm going to skip lunch today, and then we eat twice as much for dinner, right? You know, we bring flowers to our wife because we've erupted in this, this uh, uh, rage and anger, and then the very next day, we're doing the same thing. We explode again. We come once to church, and then deer season starts, okay? <laughs> we join the health club in January. We're going to do it this year. And you go a couple of times, and by February, huh, I don't know about that. And you kind of let that membership lapse. Well, what do we do? We, we spray a little paint on the surface of our lives, but we don't allow Christ to transform us from the inside out. And guys, this is why I am so excited about 2015 that I can hardly contain myself because we're going to spend the entire year, I mean from January to next December, we're going to spend the whole year talking about one thing, and that one thing is transformation. 
And what we're going to do is going to learn about how to bring about some real change in our lives. Now, the vision for our church, and if you've got it listed in your bulletin there in your sermon outline, our vision is to reach our community with the true gospel of grace so lost people can be transformed into fully devoted followers of Christ. Now, if you see that uh, in, your, in your bulletin, you know, see that little word transformed? I want you to underline transformed because that is what we are really going to zero in on. That's what we're going to concentrate on this year of 2015. You see, here at Community Bible Church, we're not just concerned about being saved. We're also very concerned about becoming changed, about becoming transformed, about becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And one of the greatest ways we can reach our community, that's right there in the first line of our our vision statement, one of the best ways for us to do that, to reach our community, is for our changed lives to attract people to Jesus Christ. For our changed lives to want to, to cause people to want to have a relationship with Christ. Now, we're going to jumpstart this whole year uh, of transformation by doing a 50-day spiritual campaign, uh, Transformed, How God Changes. I'm sorry our video projector went out, uh, but bear with me. You just have to listen a little bit closer, okay? 50-day spiritual campaign, Transformed, How God Changes Us. And the theme verse for that whole campaign is Romans 12, 2, which says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so for seven weeks, we're going to renew our minds as we dive into seven different areas of transformation. And the first week, we're going to focus in on the whole area of transforming our spiritual health, our spiritual health. And this is really where any real transformation has to start. It's got to begin here with your spiritual health. In other words, the kind of transformation we're talking about, the kind of change we want to make this year, we're not talking about just a, 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 a you know, little spray paint job. No, it begins, this kind of transformation begins with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One dad shares that on a family vacation, his little daughter, Sarah, got, you know, a little ornery, and she, she got in a little argument with her little sister, Hannah, and, and she pushed her over and, and knocked her down. And her, her dad came up to, to Sarah and said, did, did you push your sister? He said, no, flatly denying the whole thing. So the dad decided he'd take his little daughter on a walk, and they'd have a little father-daughter chat. So Sarah, he he said, I'm I'm really disappointed with your behavior. What do you need to do about it? Now, he kind of expected, he said, well, I need to stop lying, or, you know, I I, I need to apologize to my sister. I I shouldn't roughhouse. But instead, the dad was shot because the little girl with just tears welling up in her eyes, she said, I need to ask Jesus to come into my heart. She got it. You know how Jesus talks about we need to have a, a, a faith like a child? This little, she got it. This little girl, she couldn't really change. She couldn't really change unless she had Jesus in her heart. You want to change? That's where it has to start. And a lot of people out there, they, they desperately want to make changes, but they're just not able to. They're just not equipped. They don't have the tools to be able to do it. And what they need is what little Sarah needed. They need to ask Jesus to come into their hearts. And that's what we're going to talk about that first Sunday. And by the way, guys, listen up. I really want to encourage every single one of us to think about inviting somebody to join you for these seven weeks of this spiritual campaign. And that very first message on spiritual health, that's going to have the gospel in it. If you've got a friend who he really has never understood that or heard that, boy, what a great opportunity to have them come. And let me tell you, if they come to that first Sunday, I bet they'll be hooked. And I bet they're going to want to come for the next six. So, so anyway, the first message is going to be on the spiritual health. So pray about that. Pray about who God might want you to invite to join you on this campaign. Okay, the second area of transformation we're going to talk about is our physical health. Okay, our physical health. God doesn't just care about our spiritual health. He also cares about our taking care of ourselves physically. And one of the things that really, particularly in our day and our time, you know, it was something that really takes a toll on our physical bodies is stress. 
So the, na- the title of that message is going to be From Stressed to Blessed. Okay, third week, we're going to move on to talk about transformation in our mental health, okay? Romans 12, 2, again, the theme of the 50-day trans- uh, campaign, be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. And here's the deal. Once you have Christ in your heart, the real battle for a changed life takes place in your head, okay? And how and what you think. I love the New Living Translation of Romans 12, too, because it says, Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So the message that Sunday is going to be change your life by changing your mind. Okay, another important part of becoming transformed is learning how to understand and manage your emotions. So we're going to take a week to examine uh, how to have emotional health. And the message is going to be there, how to deal with how you feel. Now, one of the biggest and one of the most challenging areas of change of all has to do with our relational health, okay? And just about every one of us, I I, I imagine every single one of us could use some help in learning how to deal better in our relationships with others, whether it's with your husband or wife or with your kids or with other friends at school or the people you work with, all kinds of different relationships. There's all kinds of tension and and difficulties we we go there. So what we're going to discover in this, this message is that one of the hidden culprits that just has a way of just sabotaging our relationships is fear. So we're going to talk about facing the fears that ruin relationships. Okay, one of the areas in which people in our day really, 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 we all need some help in this is the most, uh, the most, um, maybe one of the most unhealthy areas of our lives, and that has to do with money. And as you know, money is a terrific servant and a terrible master. So as we talk about financial health, we want to just transform the whole way that we look at money. And the whole way we, we understand it, and, and it's just a very practical and, and important message on transforming how I see and use money. And then final Sunday is going to be on vocational health, okay? Uh, and one of the most difficult arenas for us to live out our lives, for us to demonstrate change, is at work. And so we're going to talk about transformation of, of our whole approach to work, and I'm going to talk about that a little later some more. But... Those are the Sunday messages, okay? But listen, everybody, don't, don't miss this, guys. Listen to this. Those messages are only one-third of the campaign. The most important, the most life-changing part of the 50-day campaign is not what happens on Sunday, but what happens throughout the week. And the thing that uh, makes these spiritual campaigns, we've done several of them before, what makes it so effective is what Rick Warren calls the power of alignment. In other words, this, this 50-day campaign is made up of three important parts. First, they're the Sunday sermons, which I just briefly went over. And then second of all, they're the daily devotions. You're going to be provided with a very nice book that's going to have your daily devotions. Uh, let's say you, you, the first one's on spiritual health. Every day that week, you'll have a daily devotion that talks specifically about that. And this is a chance for you to spend time alone about that area in which you want to change and ask God to speak to you in your heart. And, and that's just a, a very important part. And then, so, so you've got the Sunday messages, and then you've got, got the daily devotions. Third are the weekly life group study. Now, this is really important because during the week, every single, all of our life groups, we're, we're all going to do this same, a DVD study, which will be on, let's say it's a, 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 you've preached on money. Well, the DVD, the lesson that week, will be in much greater detail about how to transform uh, all of that. And the neat thing about it is that you'll have a chance to dialogue about it. You know, all the other people in your life group, you're able to share, well, what did you think about that? Or how can I apply this? Or this is, this is kind of where I'm struggling. I need some help there. And some of you right now are saying, yeah, but I'm not in a life group. You can be. You can't. There's not a person here who can't be, and this is why. What we're going to do is we're going to open up just about all those life groups to, to for anybody that wants to join to go through these seven weeks, and we're going to be adding 
eight life groups so that we can be sure that if 100% of the people at Community Bible Church want to be in a life group, they can be. All right, so that's my goal, 100 not 99, 100%. I want all of you to go through this because that is what's going to really make this thing work. So really, those three things, they're kind of the three legs of a three-legged stool of this 50-day campaign. What happens if you only have two of the legs and not three? Kind of hard to sit on a three-legged stool that just has two legs, right? You're probably going to fall down. But listen, if you really want to transform, you're not just kind of playing around with this thing. If you, if you really want to actually change, you're, fr- you're tired of being the same old way. If you really want more than just a cheap spray paint job, you need all three legs. You need the weekly sermons. You're going to need the daily devotions. You're going to need the life group meetings. And this is really fun. Okay, y'all ready for this? The Sunday after the 50-day campaign, we're going to have a celebration Sunday. Uh, That's going to be on Sunday, April the 19th. And instead of having a regular first and second service here uh, in the the sanctuary, we're all going to meet at 10 o'clock in the FLC. We're going to have a beautiful brunch. Everybody's going to just enjoy a meal together. And also we're going to just hear from different people share about different ways and different areas in which they have changed over the last 50 days. I think that is going to be really exciting. So mark that one on your calendar. Okay, after the 50-day campaign, and that's just kind of a a launch, okay? That's kind of a jump start to kind of get us to really be thinking about this all year. But we're going to jump right out of that into a seven-week study from the book of Genesis on transforming your trials, which is the life of Joseph. Anybody been through some difficult times recently? In 2014, did anybody go through a hard time or some really challenging times? I think that includes just about all of us. Well, as you know, trials can do one of two things to us. It can either make us bitter or it can make us better. And let me tell you, this guy, Joseph, he went through years and years of some unbelievably terrible, unfair trials, and God used those trials to transform his life and make him an amazing man of God. And that's what we want to learn, how we can, those trials we go through, they're not a lot of fun, but God can use that to transform us, okay? Next series, a lot of your ears are going to perk up. It's going to be transforming the home. Let me ask you, how's your family doing? Really? Not just the polite, oh, we're doing great. No, how's your family really doing? Could there possibly be any changes that you would like to see in your own family dynamic? And if so, you will want to be sure to tune in on this series of Transforming Your Home. Now, an extremely important part, an ingredient uh, of really bringing about real change in your home is for men to change, okay? God is placed a man in a leadership position in the home, and if he can change, boy, it's going to impact change in the whole family. And the problem is, is our culture has really done a number on manhood. And it's kind of presented, you know, this whole idea of manhood in just a perverted version of what God calls a man to be. And that's why we're really excited about this. We're going to do 33, the series. Now, 33 the series was written and produced by the same people who did Men's Fraternity, which a lot of us went through a number of years ago, and it was very life-changing. But the 33 series is an updated, a completely revised, using a lot of the same terrific material, but in a much more contemporary, user-friendly kind of version. And it's going to have some dynamic new speakers, and it's going to have, you know, uh, interviews with people like Matt Chandler and other respected Christian leaders, and some very contemporary, some very creative, bite-sized ways to present this material. And we're going to do two six-week segments. You don't have to sign up. I'm going to do the next 24 weeks for the next three years of my life. No, sign up for one, one six-week. And if you like that one, then sign up for for the next one. But that's going to be life-changing. By the way, you know why they call it 33 the series? Because authentic manhood, uh, because of the authentic manhood which Jesus modeled for us in his 33 years of life. Guys, I'm promising you, just talk to some of the guys who went through men's fraternity. This can be life-changing. 
Okay, in the Transforming Your Home uh, sermon series, we're going to talk about stuff like uh, six, six Secrets of a Satisfying Marriage. We're going to talk about how to resolve conflict. We're going to talk about how to deal with our anger in some healthy ways. And one other thing we want to do to help transform the home, because this is such a central key thing. Uh, we're just so grateful for Jason and Lisa LeBlanc and this their passion for helping young married uh, couples to, to have good marriages. Well, this year, instead of uh, doing the same series, The Art of Marriage, that we've done, we're going to have a six-hour, one-day seminar on love and respect. Emerson Egerich is going to do this, and it's going to be on a Saturday. You can invite your friends. You can invite your family. You can come. And this, you know, this is, in 35 years of being a pastor, this is one of the most powerful and effective marriage resources that I have ever, ever seen. And so, you know, I, I just think it's going to be great. I mean, because literally... Thousands of marriages all over the world have been transformed through these powerfully biblical, incredibly practical, absolutely applicable uh, concepts that are taught in this, this thing. So let's do that. But we're still not done. We, guys, we, we, are, we are serious about this. We really do want some real change. So we're also going to do a nine-week study on transforming your work. I said, we kind of touched on that in the 50-day 50, 50 campaign. But listen... I, I'm so, this is something, this is kind of be some new territory, okay? Because for way, way too long, you know, the Christian community has paid a lot of attention on, on Sunday morning and what happens on Sundays and what happens in, in a ministry here and there and the other, but very, very, I'm virtually ignoring where we spend most of our time, which is at work. So this series is going to really renew our minds, change our thinking about our whole approach. And it's not like, oh, this is the religious stuff and this is the secular stuff. No, it's all, we're going to see how it all works together. Then we're going to talk about uh, transforming your finances. And we're going to have some messages you know, on that about God's word and, and kind of think about it. But here's what I'm really excited about, okay? We, this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. It, if you want to change in this area, you have no excuse not to change if you do what we're offering this next thing, because we're going to offer Dave Ramsey's nine-week financial peace class. Okay, it's a nine-week class, and Dave Ramsey is today's leading Christian authority in this whole area of finances. And if you go through these nine classes and you apply what he's teaching about money, I absolutely promise you your whole attitude towards money and how to spend it is going to be transformed. Dave Ramsey is going to teach about everything from learning how to talk with your spouse about money. Do you know that's the number one area of conflict between husbands and wives, talking about money? He's going to give some, some help about that. But one of the most exciting things, he's going to, talk, to teach us how to get out of debt. Some people are just strangled by credit card debt and all kinds of debt, don't know how to get. He will give you a plan. He will show you step by step how to get out of debt. He's going to talk about how to control your spending, how to save for college, how to save for retirement, and all kinds of really practical ways to, to, to lead you to be able to have, are you ready for it, financial peace. How good does that sound? I mean, that's almost an oxymoron. Financial peace, what, those don't, those, you can't put those two words together. Well, I'll tell you what, if you, if you apply and look towards your finances in a biblical way, you can have financial peace peace. Again, this could change your life. Next series, How God Can Transform Tragedy into Triumph, a study of the book of Ruth, a great little jewel of a book in the Old Testament. And then, number seven, this is kind of interesting, we're going to talk about transforming Christmas. It'll be in December. Now, don't, don't get worried. I'm not one of these Scrooge pastors that, oh, I hate Christmas, and I think we should get rid of it and just throw the whole thing. No. I, you know, I like a lot about Christmas. I enjoy a lot of things, a lot of good things about Christmas. But, okay, let's be real. After all the parties and all the white elephant parties and all the gifts you got to buy and all the hurrying and scurrying around and, and all the presents last minute you got to buy, I, I heard more than one person tell me this year, you know what, I hate Christmas. I can't wait till it's over. We want to do something about that. We want to do something about that. We want to, as a church together, to kind of refocus about Christmas and kind of simplify it a little bit and make it a little less hectic and a little more enjoyable. So let's be praying about that, looking forward to that. 
And then just briefly, here's some other areas of transformation. For one thing, we are transforming the deacon role. It's been a little loosey-goosey, a little unstructured, you know, and, and, uh, but we are changing that. We're giving the, the deacons a whole lot more responsibility and a little more accountability, and we are excited about, we've got a great crop of deacons this year, and we're excited about what they're going to be able to do uh, in the church. Something else that's really in the process of, of transforming is our philosophy of missions, philosophy of missions. You know, again, you, you can go out and you see the, the, the pictures on the wall, and we've been very faithful in supporting them, but we don't really have a strategy. We don't really have a philosophy. Of, how, how do we choose who we're going to support and not, and how can we be more involved in their lives and that kind of stuff? So uh, Robert Durbin has stepped up and really wants to uh, help change that, and he's getting together a committee of people who really have a heart for missions. And they're going to really look in detail at our mission, missionaries and look and consider, you know, uh, at different models that other churches are doing around the country. And we're going to come up with our own philosophy of how we're going to do missions from here on out. And that, I think, is going to be very exciting and transforming for our church. Then, guess what else is going to be transformed this year? The sanctuary. You got it, Joseph. The sanctuary in which you are sitting right now, first of all, we're going to paint this, this entire room, okay? You know, this, this color gray has worked for a while, but we need to brighten things up a little bit. So we're going to have a, a whole new fresh uh, coat of paint. We're going to take the, uh, the stage and extend it out because we've got a lot of things coming up. We've got an Easter cantata. We've got some more children's plays and dramas and different things that we want to do. And the, the temporary ones are okay. They're pretty ugly. We're going to do a permanent extension, which is going to be great. And it was perfectly um, demonstrated this morning. We need a new video projector, right, guys? <laughs> and we need one that's brighter, that one can show those videos and show the sermon outline much clearer, in the, in the, like the, the Love and Respect seminar, all that kind of stuff. That will be good. And then finally, we're going to be building in the foyer a, a brand new welcome center. We're going to knock out a part of a wall, and we're going to have a big banner up there and make it a lot more user-friendly and very visible so that people who come to our church for the first time, you know, hey, that's where I go to find some information, and that's going to be really good. And we're going to add a little coffee station out there so that you, as you're before it, I'm, I'm kind of worried about it. We have trouble getting people coming into church already. And if y'all out there loudly gagging with coffee, but we might even let you bring it in. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see what, hap- what happens on that. A revolution. Ca- a revolution. Yeah, we're transforming, okay? Okay, let me just ask you a real, real, real important question. Is it, and it's here. Yeah, l- listen up. Why bother? What, what, what's so important about Transformation. What difference does it really make? Why are we going to the, pro- the trouble of spending an entire year talking about one thing, transformation? Well, I'll tell you why. Let me tell you by means of a, a story, a true story. Author, pastor, and former atheist Lee Strobel shared uh, one time about his little daughter Allison and how she was five years old when he himself became a follower of Jesus Christ. And during those first five years of her life, before her daddy became a Christian, all she had known from him as a dad was a man who used a lot of foul language and a man who was very, very angry. And she remembered very well the night he came home and just kicked a hole in the living room uh, wall, just, just out of sheer anger at life. And many a night, little Allison would, would hide in her room just to stay away from her angry dad. And five months after Lee Strobel gave his life to Christ, five-year-old Allison went to her mother, and she said, Mommy, I want God to do for me what is done in daddy. Wow. What was she saying? You know, she had never studied the archaeological evidence to support for the the reliability of the Bible. No, she she didn't know that Jesus filled, you know, 300 prophecies that were prophesied hundreds of years before. She she didn't know Genesis from Revelation. She didn't even know John 3.16. But I'll tell you what she did know. She knew that her daddy used to be this way. 
a way that was very hard for her to live with. And now her daddy, he was changing. He was becoming a different person. And if that is what God does to people, she was saying, sign me up. I want a piece of that. And so at the tender age of five, Allison Strobel gave her life to Jesus. Church, that's why transformation is important. That's why it's important. Because as your children, as your husband or your wife, or as your extended family, as your friends at school, as the people at work, the people you work with or hunt with or fish, as they see your life changing, not just the spray paint variety, but real inward change that shows up in the way you live life, they're going to want to sign up, guys. They're going to want to sign up. They're going to want to have what you have. They're going to want to invite Jesus Christ into their lives so that he can be their Lord and their Savior so that their lives can be changed. And folks, that's what it's all about. And in a minute, I'm going to close in prayer. And uh, uh, we could have Jordy and the elders come forward. Uh, and the elders are up here. Boy, I don't know. Maybe it's here at the beginning of the year. You'd like an elder just to pray. Hey, help me to make these changes. I- I'm motivated right now, but help me to stick with this. And do that. Or maybe there's a, uh, one of those problems you're having in your family or at work or somewhere. Or maybe you just want to praise God for an answer that he's given. Come on up. So Jordy's up here, and, and the elders can come on up forward. And I'll pray. Then after I pray, Jordy will sing. We'll ask you all to stand. And uh, that'll be your opportunity to come up and, and uh, let us pray for you. Because it's a real privilege, guys. We don't take it lightly. We are addressing the creator of the universe. And we'd love to do it with you. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that, uh, that you love us so much. That you uh, sent your son into this world to die for us so that we could experience change. And Father, we thank you for the grace of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us just the way we were. But Lord, we're also very aware that you don't want us to stay that way. Lord, we understand, Father, that that you want us to change, that you want us to grow, that you want us to mature in our faith so that, that, that day by day, Lord, we're starting to get to become a little more like Jesus, a little more like Jesus, a little more like Jesus. And so, Father, we just lift up this whole year to you. And, Father, we know the enemy hates this. He wants to distract us. He wants to get us off track. He wants to discourage us or disillusion us in some way. But, Lord, don't let him do it. I pray, Father, that we as a a church body can just really have a a hunger and a thirst in our hearts, Lord, to, to bring about change in those areas that we're stuck in. Lord, help us to, at the end of this year, not to be the same as we are this year, and help us to give you all the glory and all the praise. And we pray this, Father, in your Son, Jesus.